Well, good evening and welcome to American Trucks. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hope everyone's good today. Right, today we're going to explore Alaska, or parts of Alaska, I should say. And right now, I'm going to use the Macar. Because what can't you achieve in life with a Macar? Right? Well, there's a few things you can't achieve with a Macar, but um, right now, let's not worry too much about that, shall we? So, first things first. Just make sure that everything that I might really am actually live. Let me see. So let's switch to another machine. That's not showing me what I want to see. That's great. <sighs> Maybe it's here. This this happens to be an awful lot. Okay, I got to switch that, um, from YouTube Studio to um, YouTube itself to make sure that I'm live. And I know that I'm not the only person that has that issue. Right, I think I'm live. Yeah, okay. All right, that works for me. So welcome everyone. Make sure I'm there. Let's try and turn off as many distractions as I can. Because uh, who doesn't like distractions? Okay, right. So yes, this is my uh, my car. Um, Engine-wise, I think I want a, a Mac 300. So um, let's go with the E6 300. I've got a few engines here, but E6 is what I really want to do. Okay, I could do the 237, but I'm going to do the uh, this one here, the uh, E6 um, 300 Econodyne. So 11 at 12 foot-pounds of torque. Transmission-wise, I think what I want to do. Let's take a look at these. What? What 10 speeds have I got? So the 12 speed is basically a 10 speed, uh, as I understand, with a couple of extra crawler gears. And we don't really want the crawler gears today. I'm not I'm not planning on doing any uh, heavy hauling. Though, of course, you never know. <clears throat> okay, so let's fire up my spreadsheet. Because who doesn't like a spreadsheet? I'm sure plenty don't. E6. So if you didn't know, um, now you do. <clears throat> I log my trips. I try and uh, keep up. Well, I don't try. I do keep up with all of my trips that um, that I that I run in the game. Um, there should be other ten speeds here. So T R D L. Huh. Okay. Got some automatics. Where are my ten speeds? Oh, that's why. Numpty. Yes. Okay. So I've got two overdrive and one direct. Well, the direct's real short, really short gearing here, and we've got either the the stock ten speed, um, which would be yeah, a little little short there. Fifty five's about fourteen hundred revs, or I've got my slightly taller one, which is the three fifty five, and fifty five there is about so twelve fifty revs, give or take. Do I have any more? No. Oh yeah, I've got a shorter one as well. If I'm, I'm planning some heavy haul, which I'm, I'm really not. Um, some six speed. I want the six speeds. Don't need the the fullers. Some eighteen automated. I don't really want to do a five speed right now. We might do that later. On all those ten speeds, right? I guess I'll go with a Mac ten speed. I'm gonna go with a stock one. Overdrive three point eight seven. So that's fourteen hundred revs at fifty five. Don't want to go with the taller one. Better fuel consumption. Nope, not going to do it. The so Mac engine, Mac transmission, that means that my hood ornament, which is a silver rubber duck, I can make that a gold one because I've got pedigree under the hood there. Let's make it a gold duck. Who doesn't like a good gold ducking every once in a while? Do I still want the heavy bumper? Do I want to do anything with these? Large tanks, um, round tanks I could use. I feel like I've used the, the sort of the, the the square setup for a while. I think I want to do chrome is a little bright for me. Let's do um, aluminium coloured and let's go. I guess we'll go with a. Let's go with the stock bumper. Go for the stock look. I mean. It's it's not really a stock-looking truck, but 
since when has that ever wor ever worried me? Yeah, I'm going to stick with this. I think what I will do is um, change the, the the rear quarter back. Let, let's go with a slightly more stock looking machine. In fact, I might even go with steel wheels here. Oh, I've got some um, alternatives I can use. Can I put it on 24s? Hmm. I mean, that might work. Yeah, let's go with, let's look at what 24 options I've got. 24 and a half inch rims. That will, um, to make the gearing about 10% taller, which is not not a bad thing. It's going to impact my gearing, but I can fix that. Uh, I kind of like the idea of, of steels on a taller. Is that a steel? That's a kind of a steel. You haven't seen this and this. That One's glossy, one's, I guess, one's matte. So we'll go... Um, We'll go with this one. Two double eight two seven. Let's see if we can get those for the rear. Two double eight two seven. I don't know that I can, but I can do um, maybe this one, or maybe no, that's too too shiny. We don't want them polished. That's not white enough, I think. The gloss, or okay, we'll go with that one. That one here, uh, we go, and I guess the tires. Uh, I might go with the Canada ones. Continental um, HDW2. I don't know what that stands for. I don't think it matters that much because I'm in Canada, A. Eh? So have I got something here that's got Canada in the word? No, of course not. Uh, uh, no, I don't want those. Um, Good years, maybe the Bridgestones. I wonder why those are so so small. Wow. Okay, that one's about the closest HSA. Whatever that means. Michelin Energies. I'll go with these. It, it'll do me. And then I suppose. I don't want to go for. Let's go for the three-quarter inch bud distressed. That's a very American sounding unit. Uh, the, the quarter inch, the bud distressed. I don't have them here. Great. Bud single distressed. Do I have a jewel? Two-piece. Was it two-piece? Toothpiece. Oh, I see. Okay. No, nope. not gonna go with those. Bud single distressed. That works for me. Or oh, jewel or single. I'll, I'll go with a single. Okay, I think we're pretty much where I want to be. What can I do with my grill? Can I do anything with it? Paint the frame, paint the nerves, can I go with that. You know, color-wise, I believe I have a nice creamy white color I can choose. How about that? Yeah, that's a little bright, but I think that'll do, actually. Yeah, that was a little snug. I am going to remove that. I'm going to do something different here. You know, plastic. Does that give me a bit more? A bit more. Oof, barely any. I may have to remove them completely. That that's way snug. Yeah, I'm just going to remove it. We're not going to bother with um with that. Okay. I'm removing stuff. Um, do I need the inlet? I don't need it, I suppose. I could remove it. Could do that. Yeah, that's fine. It's been a while since I've had a clean look. Um, my car. I guess I should replace the exhaust as well. So we've got a stock option. Stock right back mounted like so. You can move them forward. So you can do... Um, Bent right back mounted. Do I have another stock one somewhere? Uh, somewhere. Oh, that's what that means. But I don't particularly want to put them forward of the of the um, of the sleeper. Although, if there's a shorter one, no, I don't think there is. Right. 
Right, five inch straight with gourd. <clears throat> that must be guard. Well, that's kind of tempting. You just th you 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 throw on the the sort of sleeper right right there. I don't want a left one. I want a right one. Well, you know what? Let's filter that down. Okay, right. So straight back mounted, straight five inch straight, straight with guard, straight back mounted is back here, which we don't. Oh, it doesn't look bad, but I don't. I don't know that I really need it back. I'm actually tempted to just put it here. I mean, what's this space otherwise used for? It's kind of wasted space. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. Leave it there. Okay, main mirrors. Stop with the bulldog. I think that works for me. I guess we'll 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 save the two dollars. It will cost us more to remove it, but we'll do that. Do I really need a HUD or, or what's called front mirrors? Um, I guess I'm going to keep them there. Right, so that has given me... Um, oh, let's look at the interior. Black or... Black or brown. I'll go with brown for, for a change. I usually go black. But we'll go with that. I like prefer the older style steering wheel. So we do that like so. Interior, otherwise I'm going to keep it as it is. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, I think we're kind of there. Is it missing anything? I don't think I need the deck plate. Uh, that's tempting, but, but I'm not going to. Let's not do that. I don't need it colored. I'm not getting mud guards. Oh, I, I guess I'll get rare mud guards. We, we want some of those. Let's think about the person following me, the un unfortunate person behind me who's going to covered in stones and junk and stuff. Uh, I guess the straps. I could paint them. I could chrome them. Or I could just keep them stock. I'm going to keep them stock. I think we are there. Right. One last check. Yep. Okay. Go ahead there. Oh, yeah, that's done that. A um, little bit of damage or wear rather on the chassis, but that's nothing to worry too much about. It's just 3%, but I guess that's longer term wear. Permanent wear. Yes. Well, I this truck has been enjoyed. It's been way, way used, and that's not a bad thing. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. If you've seen Alaska, this will be um, this won't be anything new. It's gonna start the engine, turn this on. It's early in the morning, I think it's like six o'clock. Quarter to six. Um, I got six hours till the end of my shift. Half a tank of fuel, quick look around the cabin, half a tank of fuel. Um, oil pressure's fine, temperature is cold, yet we we know. Okay. Um, it's a smart looking truck. That's very, very dated looking, but I, I like that. Okay, let's see what cargo we've got. So Alaska West, gallon oil, and that's about it. So we'll see if there's anything available from, from here using this map. Diesel to go north. I don't, don't fancy going north, I have to say. Um, that's a long drive, and it, it's not bad, but get a bit bored of it after a while. Or we can go to Fairbanks, and um, that might be okay. Well, I said that might be okay. That, that's about my only option. 1,600 miles over land across the other side of Montana. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> not not on the stream. Or Alaska West Express electro electronic components. I'm going to travel to Alaska um, Express and see if they have anything else when I get there. Um, I might, well, I won't need fuel if it's just uh, just that trip. I'm using it uh, automated right now, so my windows down. Yeah, come on, David. I'm making the right mess of this. I don't think I've tested this engine transmission combination using 24 and a half inch rims. Oh, that's busy. 
it's it's early in the morning. Why is it so busy? What is this? Red in the field. Okay. Sorry, my translation. Thank you. By whip, sorry, what I mean is um, you'll, you'll move off and you'll in automated mode you might go from maybe first to third. By the time you get into third, you're going too slow for third gear. So the transmission puts you back down into first, and then of course you're going to you accelerate. You're going well, I'm speeding. You're going um, too fast for, for first. So that's something that some transmissions suffer from. Some engine um, suffer from it. I work hard not to have that happen to me or to my own custom engines. But I don't test every possibility and I have not tested the 24 and a half inch rim, I don't think. I'm quite sure I, I'm sure I haven't. No, I could say, well, you, you're using another mod, so I don't know what's going to happen, but that's a bit of a cop out, really. I don't need to be doing that. There's a much nicer way of, of dealing with, with that, I think. You know, I can just test it. Okay. Right, what have they got? Uh, see what options we have. Uh, a big one or a small one? Um, well, I don't really feel like taking the lighter cargo, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the smaller one. Sorry, the larger one even. Let's grab the cargo. So what was this, 11,499 pounds? We'll find out in a second. So Alaska is a very interesting state. Um, the map is, is definitely a, a mod map. Um, there are some performance save issues. Somewhere between the game engine and the map, um, you get quite a lot of, of, of popping. Thing to wish I'd colored those rims the same as my paint on the truck, but that's okay. So you'll be driving along and you'll see a lot more mountains pop in than you might be used to otherwise. Okay, and that round I don't really need to um, to watch this from external, it's not exactly a difficult, he says, can't go to back up onto. Um, apparently, it's harder than I thought. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm I'm quite high. I gotta drop the right height. That was a very schoolboy mistake to make. Let's try that again, shall we? Don't know why I'm steering in I'm steering in purple. Okay, did I get it? Did I get it? Yes, I did. Okay. Just the right height, back to where it should be. Let's quickly check this. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks fine. Go ahead and pair it up. Connect. Okay. Um, we'll do a we'll do a quick tug test. So that's a trailer trailer brake on in first gear. Let's try and move move off. Yep. I would say that that is uh, that is fine. So let's release the trailer brake and uh, let's make like a make like a baby and head out of here. So we'll take the rightmost exit. That's what it wants me to do. During tonight's trip, um, I have uh, a mid a mid road snack to enjoy. The, what are these exactly? They're uh, Atkins Double Fudge Brownie Bar, um, and clearly I'm British, so we have some tea because you can't drive without tea. And if you're thinking, what's this limey doing at one o'clock in the morning, driving a truck drinking tea? Well, I live in. Texas Central Time Zone, and it's only 7:22 p.m. at the precise time of speaking. So I may be Brit, but I'm living in Texas. All right, look at that! Break the traffic. Let's go. Not the biggest break, but hey, it's a break all the same. Right. So, what are my expectations from this trip? Um, it's a uh, mid-range Mac engine in, um, I, I would say a big Mac truck, but um, it's certainly in one of the biggest Mac car models. I'm already speeding, that's not good. I think its performance will be absolutely fine, no great shakes. 
we're going to come across some gradients and they're going to be steep and I'm going to pretty much grind to a, a crawl. I don't have a heavy haul transmission, but I don't think I need it. This, this cargo is, I mean, 11,199 pounds. Oh, oh, break, break, break. I don't want to run in the back of someone. That would not be a good start. So yeah, pretty light cargo. Um, what's the journey? 250 miles, so I've got five hours to do it in. I, my shift is over before the end of it, so I'm going to have to take a night stop at some point. And the sad thing is, I'm going to miss a lot of the daytime by doing that, because, well, maybe I stop now. Yeah, if I stop now, I can get to show off most of the game at night, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's uh, whistle nonchalantly as we turn here, because there's a break area just up here. I'm not going to do the whole um, backing in here, we're just going to make a mess of it the, well, later on today. I guess this will do. This is not very neat. Uh, judge me. Judge me harshly, that's fine. Right, so uh, let's get in the back of my cabin. And let's take a bit of a nap. I'll be back in the game. Right, it's coming out at 5 pm, so I'm going to remote start from back here. Let's wander into the front. There we go. That uh, RV is still next to me, so headlights on. This is uh, Alaska, they want the headlights on all the time. And we'll back it up. So, fuel is about half a tank. Don't need to worry too much about that. I mean, you, you do have to worry about fuel a bit more in Alaska because once you're out of the sort of southern tip, there aren't many fuel stops. Okay, I'm going to manually um, just shift my gears here, I think. I, I don't need it to whip so so much. Making a bit of a mess of this already. It's always good to see. I mean I could probably escape. Yeah, I'm going about this the wrong way. Okay. Right, let's go ahead and do this. Put it back into automated mode. I'm too lazy to shift gear. Uh, too concerned I'll make a mess of it. I am going to leave here and turn left. I could leave to the, I guess it's the south, is it? Yeah, I could leave to the south and then turn left and turn left again, or I could just leave to, I'll go this way. Quick tour of the uh, gas station. Okay, so let's tell people I'm turning left. There's a Prius over there on the left, but we'll not be bumping into it this trip. I haven't saved any time, just a bit of complexity. Honest. Not that you believe it. Oh, there's a cop. I don't see those very often. Possibly should have gone. I'll go after this red SUV. It's very trusting of me to assume that there was nothing coming from the left there. But there wasn't, so it's good. And we're off. Good grief, dramatic break there behind me, sunshine. Alright, I'll set my cruiser 55. Um, it's going to be getting dark, all darkish, because Alaska doesn't get dark like, a, like the southern states. And yes, they're all southern to Alaska. And we come to our first hill. Yes, this is a hill. Not that you'd believe it, but it really is. And we can feel it. We're powering through that hill, that works for me.
buses are usually not slow, but that's the second or third time I've come up against the bus turning right and just not getting up to cruise quickly. I don't really know why that is. Hey, generic white male. Yes, the map really is something special. It's it's grown on me. I, I find that the northern half, sometimes if I'm not in the right mood, I'm like, I just want to get there as fast as possible. But the, the southern half, um, I'm using it to test my engines, my, my engine definitions. These hills are a killer. Um, then the, the tight corners and up and down through the gears, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, and it's $20. I mean, it, it's a, I think it's a bit of a steal. Yes, there aren't that many jobs, but Alaska's not a very well populated state, so I mean, what do you expect? And you don't necessarily come, well, I suppose you do, you don't come here for the jobs, you come here because you get to see the scenery. And if it gets dark and the night's clear, we might have a little surprise for us in the sky as well. We might. person steering again. I suck. I to get my speed up to 60. I mean, in theory, because the speed limit's gone up to 60, so hey. Okay. Yeah, there are times when I'm, I'm in the north. I, 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 I enjoy the sort of ice road trucking and, and the sort of sliding off the road, and that can be a challenge. And there's a, there's a real sort of isolation thing as well. I mean, if you run off the road, you know, you're done for. You get loads of time, so you could probably walk it, maybe. But yeah, there are times when I'm like, I just want to get to my destination. Don't make me do 25 miles an hour up this really steep mountain pass. But then you could take a job in the south. You can also go southern part of Texas to northern part of Alaska, and I think that's something like 3,500 miles road trip and a thousand miles on a ferry, and um, you can do that. And why would you not? Well, you might not have nine hours to drive it in real time, but hey, maybe you do. I'm yawning already. This is not a good sign. I don't think I was up too late. What's up quite late last night? Okay. Maybe I'll take a sip of tea. That might start to compensate. So, um, generic white male. I wonder if I can say something else. So, uh, G GWM is just as awkward for me to say. But have you noticed how in Alaska they don't give you a recommended speed for, for corners? You get the warning sign. Sometimes in a warning sign, you know, it says 45, but I mean, they don't really mean 45. They mean like 65 is going to be okay. They don't, that doesn't happen in Alaska. You don't get the sign, so you barrel up to it thinking, I'll be fine at 50. Yeah, no, you're not fine at 50. There aren't enough dry cleaners for the number of, um, of changes of uh, underwear I've had to take through inadvertently going into a corner of what felt like Mac 2 to realize that, oh, oh, it's it's a little tighter than I thought, and that's what she said. So yeah, um, I, I love the, the challenges of the map, and I'm slowly learning the routes. And then it's this time of day, and this looks stunning. Like to the pipeline on the horizon, the, the, the trees, there's a bit of popping from the background. Okay, I, I, I push through that. But this whole foggy tree thing, Oh yeah, and the fog and the snow, that is not fun. Visibility is maybe four feet. Yeah, that's not good. So yeah, a lot of a lot of joy to be had. Um, if you ever convoy with me and you don't have this this map, I'm gonna be like, hey, you're doing? You wanna buy this map? It's cool. Maybe. We'll see. Someone should make. Um, the Vampire Suck mod for the uh, Washington State. I was thinking about that the other day, um, and how um, you, know, you go through the forests, can you have like a shiny person that we can, that like sparkles in the headlights? 
or only if you've got the right bulbs, I suppose. Yeah, so here we are, just ambling along. Let's look at some numbers on the truck. So it's 7 p.m. Cruising, I'm getting, well, instantaneous of 11 to the gallon. That doesn't mean I'm going to get 11 for the trip. I actually don't think I will. But, you know, these, these 11 litre Mac engines, they're not that highly stressed. Some of the 12s can be. My gearing is sensible, but not particularly tall. Yeah. And yes, you're right, there's the oh shit corner. That, that's, um, you crest a hill in the snow, and, and I, they've done something to the physics. As you, as you crest the hill, you can get uh, something of a sideways movement. Uh, there's a lot of a sideways movement. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to that that way with it cargo and try not to fall off the road. Oh, and here's a corner. Now, how tight is this corner? I mean, it doesn't look so bad. Oh, dang it. Let me to do that. I meant to do this. It doesn't look that bad. But it's followed by a left-hand bend, so I'm going to drop my speed to at least 45, I think. Or attempt to do it to 45. So, here's the left. Let's get on the engine brake. Here's the right. Again, not so bad here, actually. But it's certainly time to get back on the power with cruise. Going up the hill helps. If you're going down a hill and you don't lose any speed because the hill, you can suddenly find... Oh, is that the shrubbery in my mirror? Yeah, that's not good. This S-Bend coming up? Yeah, not as cool as S-Club back in the day. Kill the power. Not a, a moose. Oh wait, are they called moose or elk in Alaska? Yeah, elk is the Canadian, I think, and moose is the European and American. But I may be completely wrong there. I've been wrong several times today. Okay, and the limit's gone back up to 60 because of Alaska. So, let's feel those 1,112 torques all talking away under the hood sail towards the horizon of 300 horsepower. Which, to be all said and done, is not a bad amount from the back. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I think I'm right. I don't, I don't remember what I was right about, but hey, hey, if I'm right today, I'm going to take it. I love that, that little sound from the engine brake. I may regret making that noise when I come to replay this at some point. What are we doing for motion lotion? Plenty of motion lotion. I'm going to obsess over motion lotion in Alaska. Ask me why. Well, because I ran out this one time in the middle of nowhere and, and had this been a survival game, well, you're dead, pal. Know what I mean? Yeah, it wouldn't have been good. Why it's called Delta Junction? Can't think why. <laughs> Look at the map, David. I mean, they could call it David's Junction because da David starts with a D, right? Yeah, maybe. Oh, it's a stop sign. Oh, elk and moose are different animals, huh? Oh, it makes sense because moose, you can make it to that wonderful pudding, and elk. Um, I mean, you never see an elk on the shelf, but you see lots of mooses. Is it moose, mooses, or moose-eye? Moose-eye. Hey, can I get three of those moose-eye, please? <laughs> can I get three of those elks? I remember the elk was famous because... Uh, the elks are an animal in, in Sweden because the Swedish elk test. The, um, the first generation Mercedes-Benz A-Class failed the elk test because it would just roll over. So they ended up stiffening the suspension and giving all of them electronic stability and delaying the launch. Oh, that was a few years ago now. Wow. Am I showing my age? And yes, I, uh, I did own a second generation A-Class. By this point, they looked a bit like, like a kind of wedge of cheese with the legs of space in the back. Was it a Super Mini? Was it a Ford? Uh, was it a small family car? 
I mean, yes. It's to both, I think. Actually, I had that car eight years ago. Now I come to think about it. Nine years ago, even, sorry. special, the, the first generation A-Class, but it was one of the, the very first cars that had, its, its crash proofing was designed to, to basically push the passenger compartment up and the engine down, so up until that point, if you ran into something, or if another car ran in, into your car, the engine and transmission, if it's a front, frontal impact, kind of became part of the, of the crumple zone, and Engines do not crumple very well, and gearboxes are just the same, but in the A-Class, they're like pushed underneath the, the passenger cell, so for its size, the A-Class was revolutionary because you might survive a pretty major frontal impact. The, um, was that Audi A1? The, the, the disclaimer, I'm not really a fan of, of, of Audis because of a whole bunch of conceived ideas about Audi drivers, which are based in utter myth and a former UK company car culture, which is of course lies. Why is this bus doing 25 miles an hour? Get a move on sunshine. Are you running behind an elk or a moose? Yes, anyway, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of Audis, but the A1 was available as a it's like a three-cylinder TDI, the 1.4 that got like a hundred miles per gallon. Okay, in the 80s, I think, in UK gallons. And that had a service panel, which was a little flap under the hood. You open it up, and you could, well, you couldn't service it, but you could check check the fluids. And I imagine that most Audi drivers, you know, had someone do that for them at the dealer. And if no lights came on, it obviously had enough of everything. If you run a car, please check your oil. Please check your fluids. <sighs> Don't be a chump. Don't assume everything's fine. It's not NASCAR. If the rules don't say it, you can do it. It does not apply to owning a car, because it's expensive to have to change an oil. But yeah, yeah, the, the A-Class was interesting at the time. Um, I was fascinated by the, the idea that, that, they, that Mercedes would just decide to throw out the rule book for a small car. But yes, it, it still looks special. Come on, sunshine. I'm in a 300 horsepower Macca with like electronic components behind me. Oh, I should not be doing this, but I'm going to do it. Must be overtaking slow motion. Thank you. Hey, it honked him and he slowed down. I should try that again. I wonder if that works on Texas roads. If I try, this could be my last live stream. <laughs> Something else as well about the A-Class, I don't know, well, I don't know if it was the first um, small, or considered small car, with a diesel and an automatic packaged at the same time. The Audi A1 might have had an auto with the TDI, I don't think it did. Um, but if you wanted a, a diesel and wanted an automatic, you were pretty much restricted to um, compact executive type cars, like a, uh, well I guess a C-Class Mercedes or a 3 Series BMW, and BMW maybe, with the auto. And then Mercedes like, you can have one of these with, you can have this A170 CDI with the automatic. Oh, and I'm 
highway speeding. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Almost got down to 30. Well, I did get down to 30, and then I overshot and got too slow. Well, that was a kind of uneventful trip. Um, I'm going to take a break in the game, and we'll do some daylight driving when I... So we can actually get to see, I might just explore a bit of Fairbanks as well. So 8th gear, 1200 revs at 30. It's nice and responsive at this kind of engine speed. Okay, I'm going to turn left up here. And what do I think to having the, well, getting the left lane then. I have the 24 inch rims on the, um, the Mac. Well, I think that's fine. Oh, sm small child has appeared. Small child has disappeared. I'm more of a manual guy myself. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, it's hard to drive a manual in the US. Uh, no word of a lie. You have to find a manual. Well, Depending on the car you're looking at, but generally you gotta hunt for a manual. And sometimes the only manuals that you see are things like, you know, an M3 um, or a Corvette. Now, whilst absolutely I would have no issue driving to work in a Corvette, it's a bit overkill. Plus, uh, I, I would, I would get busted speeding. Uh, I'm sorry, you, you put a British guy in a V8 Corvette. Um, is like probably the most American car I could find easily, apart from a Hummer and I don't want to have a pickup or, or an SUV, thanks. I'm going to get done speeding. You can buy a uh, really lights. You can buy a Mustang with a manual, some of them, but not all of them. So it's like, I miss me clutch pedal. Says the guy who last car in the UK was indeed an automatic, but that's because he's tight and he bought it for lower depreciation of buying an auto. I didn't really need that car. Drive at that point. Mm. Best of both worlds, I suppose. It would be for me, maybe a pretty girl driving a manual. Wait. Yeah, not sure how that's relevant. Other genders are available, just, just as a disclaimer. <laughs> Alright, hot rod mode. up the rear, drop the front, so it looks really stupid. I suppose I could put 24s on the back and 22s on the front to really make it look daft. I've done stranger things, that, well, that's for sure. Okay. I'll let the height correct itself in just a jiffy. to the right. That is not a brown bear or a black bear, that is a, a veer to the right, which is like this, but obviously less extreme. <laughs> yeah, I was reading a report about man the state of manuals in the US, and it's, um, the percentage of manuals sold is something like 5%, I think. And it's a case of you, need, you have to find them. So, I drive around in a, a Ford Fusion that is kind of, sort of, nearly a uh, Mondeo. Um, it, it's not. It looks a little bit like one. But it, it's what they call a... Uh, it's not a compact. This is a small sedan. But anyway, it, 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 it isn't a full size. It's like a... like a, It's a mid-size. There we go. Which, I mean, it's not exactly a small car to what I'm used to in the UK. But over here, it's like... <laughs> You could park that in a compact, mate. <laughs> but you can't buy them as a manual. You have to buy an auto. And um, the generation I've got doesn't even have a shift to stick. It's got a little knob. <laughs> so it reminds me of one of my old bosses. He had a little, little knob too. Um, anyway, uh, I was about to run into this guy. No, okay. It's confusing everyone by looking random places and not going where I'm supposed to go. So where am I going again? The Carlisle, Carlisle Fairbanks. What the heck is that? Oh, it's to my left. I I see. 
It's it's in it's in this yard on the left, okay. And I'm gonna get there. Um Is this turning? No. Nope. Great. So I managed to get lost in my definition. My, 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 uh, my destination. Way to go, genius. And there wasn't a stop sign there. Oh, grass verge. There's a fence here. What do they do? Do they hide it? Oh, oh, this must be a one-way street. Oh, crappy poop stains. A give over. It's not that dramatic, man. Yeah, uh, this was a rather foolish. Um, <laughs> heck am I going? Don't mind me. I didn't get a ticket. Dang. All right. I must look like a tourist. I mean, let's, let's get me windows down and my hazards are there. Everyone knows that I'm lost. All right, so this must be where I pull in here, I think. The heck is that? Yeah, I am not pulling into that black hole. What on earth is that? Is that a floor with a map? I'm going to jump out and have a look at this. What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh, it's another, it's another dimension. I'm tempted to, to, to like drive in here. I mean, where does it go? Yeah, that would be... Oh, there's a dog up there. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I want to enter the Twilight Zone, but it would be kind of cool. All right, let's jump back in the cabin and um, pretend that we never saw that. Okay, there's a no entry sign. Thanks for that. So I guess we pull in here, maybe. There's that dog again. Um, yeah, this seems dodgy. Well, I, I guess I'm gonna go in here because I don't know where else to go. Let's see if this chap can help me. Excuse me. I know, let's close my windows. Like, when you were a kid and you went somewhere dodgy and your parents said, lock your windows, it's like, yeah, no, it's not going to make a day with day. Oh, it's like a... Oh, I see. This is a yard with um, random people wandering around. That doesn't look dodgy at all. I bet he's smoking there in that big oil tanker thing. So it's up here on the right. Okay, and I can get some diesel there, which is good. Still got plenty, but I might get some anyway. And I suppose we avoid the dog when we go down here. What do they want with these electronic components anyway? I mean, what are they doing? They're drinking wine and making electronic things. Oh boy. <laughs> Something's going down. <laughs> oh ho oh, ho! Oh. oh ho ho! Yeah, don't mind me, guys. I'm just gonna um, mind my own business. Uh, yeah, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just get the heck out of here. Okay, so 251 miles, and I used only 36 and a third gallons, give or take. So it's about seven miles per gallon, which I think, in context of what I was doing, is probably about right. Yeah, they they don't give you a shotgun in this game. All right. Uh, I want to find somewhere to take a, a, a break, but probably not in this yard. I could buy a garage here, but actually I, I discovered I've got something else to spend my money on. Um, like, like lot lizards or something, I don't know. So we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to hack down this road here. We're going to head south. So, uh, um, I guess I've got to go back around the way I came. See, look at that. Is he peeing? 
no, okay, he's he's muttering something and staring. I, I'm just going to keep... Um, um, yeah. I, I'm going to walk, just go around here, I think. I guess I'm going to have to come out the way I came. I feel like buying this garage is because I can. Um, can I afford it? Yeah, I'm sure I can afford it. I mean, what's the worst that happens, right, if I buy a garage here? I got access to um, local uh, produce. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say yes because hey, there's a there's a repair shop right here. There's a fuel station right here. There's somewhere to sleep, so uh, it's not actually bad. And now I've become a tenant, so that doesn't seem so bad. How good the locks are in a, a 1970-something my car. I don't think it has good locks. And there's that dog again. And there's someone else out there. Good grief. I want to run the little fella over. Do you buy fuel right from the tanker? No, there's actually a tank there, I think. I'm all for supporting the local economy, but I don't know whether I really want to get lost again. This is like the worst yard ever to get lost in. Well, seeing as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and turn the light. Because I don't want to run out of fuel. And besides, if I give some money, then maybe, um, maybe I'll be okay. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of cars in the US that don't come as a manual, um, or don't easily come as a manual. You can get some police spec machines that come as a manual, but I believe. Hmm. But I remember reading about the Dodge Charger. It's, uh... Some police forces love to, or services love to use those. You can see why. I mean, you're going to put a Hemi in a, in a, a full size um, with an auto, and um, it'll wheel spin the twisting 50. I'm, I'm sure. But the the charger that you could buy in a showroom, and they, they may still make them. Um, but the charger you can buy has like, had an, an eight or a nine or a ten speed auto. And that had a, either a shifter or a little knob um, on the center console. Oh. But the police one had a column mounted shift with a five speed auto. Okay, I mean, why would you give the police fewer gears? Well, the reason why there is because that five speed transmission, and I know I should turn left here, but I'm going to because I'm a rebel. That five speed was compatible with the all wheel drive charger, which the eight. 9 or 10 speed, and I forget how many gears it had, is not. Why do you want something with a V8 and all-wheel drive? Well, I'll tell you why, because it's much harder to spin it off the road. I could, I know I could still manage it, but it's just harder to. Oh, and it maybe takes half a second off your time to 60, and maybe a couple of seconds in the wet. So yeah, that, that would be a, an option if... Um, if you were happy with a with a police spec, and yeah, I think I'd be very happy with a police spec. You can't impersonate a police officer, but they do look like cop cars still. Right, let's get out of Dodge. Yeah, but I wouldn't want it to, to keep up with the police. It's like I say, I, I don't want to get book speeding. I'm pulling through this red light like a boss. Because if I do get stopped by the police speeding, they're going to ask, where are you from? Yeah, see what I mean? They're going to ask where I'm from and where I'm going, and it's just like, you know, I'm, I don't sound like I'm Texan, you get the wrong officer, he or she having a bad day, it's just not worth the complication. So I will be that guy doing 51 and a 50 limit, and everyone else is doing 75, so it seems. Right, time to break. Pitch squealers courtesy of uh, Z mods. Right. I pulled in here like a boss, um, shredded my tyres, 
I'm going to go ahead and take a break because... that and then we'll switch to this view and we'll be back in the morning. Hi, 9-11 daylight. I really want to... Hey Bart, how you doing? I am going to attempt to maneuver back here. Yeah, that's a little, uh, that's whip soldering quite a bit. Right, if you have an opinion of what I should put under the hood of this Mac R, now is a good time to let me know. But I think I'm going to put it back on 24 inch rims. I like little ditty rims. That's what she said. Uh, yeah, we'll, go, we'll go with steel because it's my name. Don't wear it out. And 295.75s are 275. I'll go with the economy tires. Let's be a little tight for once. I guess we'll go with steel advanced because, well, I'm not advanced myself, but maybe, maybe somebody is. Steel advanced. Yep. Yeah, look at that difference in 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 ride height. It's quite obvious when you take the the last one off. So we really want two seventy five. So two ninety fives are there. Two seventy five eighty. Uh, D plus or Z or Z. I think, well, D plus looks like it's an off-road, and I don't necessarily think I want that. But the energy Z, energy Z, good grief, so used to saying Z. Looks like one of those, um, you know, do 100,000 miles a year. I'm glad that you're good. Unless you want me to switch to install the, the good engine. That might be a thing. I think I want a slightly less subtle color. What have we got? What's my special favorite red? It's one of them. That's the darker one, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with the with the shiny red because who doesn't like shiny red? That's very bright. That's okay. Let's fit you with lots of red because I think if I do this, we get even more red on there. Yes, we do. How about that? That's what I like to see. We'll Fit a deck plate, because like a bit of deck plate, if you know what I mean. Uh, I could do custom, I could do a heavy, or I could do a red bull bar, just to scare all the elks and mooses. You can implant them yourself, implement them yourself. Oh, um, the, the, the difference is in. Yeah, um, I've read that and I haven't looked at the definitions, but this is a DLC. Maybe it makes a difference. I, I don't know. I think the painted ball bar looks a little coarse. I think the heavy looks okay, but we'll go with the custom since I haven't run that tonight. I think we'll go with a filter. I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the double pipe. So that, that was... Um, Two stage. It had, um, if I remember this correctly, there was like an air-to-air -air intercooler and an air intake. So this way you've got the the, the dual pipes on there, and only a few engines um, were spec'd with that kind of setup. So the 300 was. Um, that's the 285 horsepower Mac. Um, that certainly had that uh, that arrangement. The the 237 did not. Well, fair enough. DLC don't have them either. I may have to add some custom tires to, um, no, don't add the custom tires to your engine pack, that'd be stupid. I had a rant a few weeks ago about, um, you know, if you if you have a, a mod for X, don't include Y and Z. It's just confusing for people, and there my, my point was, sometimes people have like a truck mod, but they, they include a field of view um, mod at the same time, which is okay, but it impacts everything else in the game and if, if you're wondering why does this why is something changed and it's actually because the, a, a mod that you installed is not relevant to what you're driving th at that moment so I'll not be installing oh I know what I need to run 
I need to run my um, ENDDT V8. I think I want the uh, sleeper double caps. No, double lights even. There we go. So red means fast, right? Kind of. Let's at least make it sound fast. Uh, that that's not what I'm expecting to see. What? Oh, okay, let's try that. Oh, that's a shame. I don't have what I was looking for. Okay. I guess um, I must have taken them out. So I've got a range of 14.2 liter um, EN DDT 865 and 866. That jargon is basically a 14.2 liter V8 that uh, Mac sold for a fairly brief period of time. Um, and the Mac R, the Superliner, um, certainly got it. But I guess I only have it for the Superliner right now. I'm still working on that engine. I think I want to change these these out. Uh, it kind of makes them narrower and I think I want the sort of wider track there for stability and performance but uh, it's such a de deliberation I quite like progress. I want to go with progress it'll be fine. It's not like I'm going to go fast enough to fall off the road anyway so bro. Well, I could do super singles well, it's tempting, but no. Let's not do super singles, because before you know, I'll be taking another 10 minutes just to kind of figure what I want my truck to look like. <sighs> if you're driving, it'll be... <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not that... F well, maybe I'm sometimes fast. I'm generally calm, sort of. Kind of. Could install a... Detroit Diesel Series 60 and just have something weird under the hood. Um, they did come with uh, Detroit Diesels, but typically the, the sort of um, 6V92s. The R700 could have the 8V92, which is why it's one of the um, engines in my Red Thunder. That's my private testing mod. Um, that's the L10. Hmm. The newer Mac engines, that, that's an interesting choice. Just because you, cause I can. The 300 AM, that's the, um, uh, works with a five speed. That's kind of tempting. That also works with a five speed. The L, with the lower revving ones. Peak torque has produced at just over a thousand RPM. It's a really workable engine, but it's not what you'd call fast. And this one will sound fast, but will not be fast. These, this one's a little too big to fit under the hood, but I guess we would pretend it fits. That would fit. That'd be a good choice. This would another good choice as well. That's a, that's a wonderful engine um, in this truck. Okay, got to decide. Taking too long to just worry about it. That might be an option. Deliberations. Oh, the ISL 9. I recently added the ISL and the ISL 9 to the uh, production's engine pack. So these are the I ISL options. We've got a 450. <laughs> it's too much for what Max say you should run, which is all the more reason why you should run it. Yeah, I think we'll go with um, with a, a small capacity, but but fairly high output engine. I I think that has a certain charm about it. Well, I'm going to say charm. And I think I'm going to go with the older engine though. So this uh, this engine here was still was being made when the Mac uh, was still in production. So maybe it was it might have kind of seen service. Maybe. Transmission wise, we're going to move away from Mac. Um, I want to go with something a little, a little fewer gears to, to switch. Uh, 
so many gears here to play around with. Let's switch to one of these. That can't handle the torque. That could handle the torque, but it's an overdrive, and that wouldn't be too big a deal. That's an automated 10 speed. That's a. Uh, we'll go with a Road Ranger. And maybe something like that. Um, let's punch that into my uh, my spreadsheet. What would my gearing numbers be? So 433 is an overdrive, it's about 1350 at 55. That's actually about right. Yep, that, that'll do. I think that'll do. Do I want red wheels? Or black wheels? Black wheels might look good. I mean, right? Oh, I think that. That kind of sets it off. I know, nobody really cares. They're a little shiny for me, but they'll do. And I've got the stock exhaust. I, let's let's make the exhaust shiny. I and mean, that's good for a bit more power, right? So we want a both. And there's a shiny short one, which makes me think of my beautiful wife. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's just a little bit in your face. So is that. Um, no, don't want that one. I think I like the sort of hidden look. I don't think I really want the, the two sticking out, but then again, that's, uh, that's actually interesting. You know what? Let's go with that, just because. Yeah, let's go with this one. It's a bit brash. Perfect. Right. That took me way longer than I hoped. I think um, that's a pretty standard sounding engine. Yeah, okay. I guess we should see what's actually available cargo wise. Oh, there's loads. I'm going to go down here and check out the, um, the Steeler. You get some. some get well, I mean, one is a cool name because who doesn't like it? But two, we often get some pretty heavy cargoes from, from Steeler because some uh, red cars and all that kind of stuff. Like there from the game. A lot of like from the game. <laughs> this feels a bit different to what I had before. I suppose I could have gone to 4 2 print. Yeah. Too late. Maybe I would have changed my interior to be black, but I, I'm, I'm okay with it being uh, red, uh, red and like beige browny color. I'm just testing the engine works here. Obviously, it's not a cold engine or nothing. Didn't get the back end to hang out there. Never mind. Yeah, okay, dog. This is going to be an express delivery. You're going to have to get used to me. Um, Bending the speed limit, and hey, there's a stop sign here, but we can avoid it by doing this. Ooh, is, it, is, is this a jump? It is. <laughs> that was uh, that was a little rash. Okay, let's go back and actually see if they have any jobs for me, shall we? Um, who left that railway carriage there anyway? Oh, stupid. Okay, what have we got? <sighs> That's a long trip. Um, a lot of it is um, is uh, sadly on ferry, and that's not a very heavy cargo. Um, there might be a double, maybe I could use a grab, but yeah, there is, but I don't think it's gonna be very heavy. Yeah, that's not heavy, that's not heavy enough. Um, what's the point in, in doing a trip? It's also a bit long. And I'm not used to anyone ever saying that to me. So, oh, I grounded. Okay. Well, it's not showing any damage, so 
That's fine. This looks kind of nice in, in sort of like action red. Just think how cool it would look if it were action yellow. Maybe that'll be the, the next color I use. Alright, let's move around here. We will take our driving a bit more seriously once we grab a cargo, but I'm happy to have a bit of wear and damage on a truck. So I think it reflects the fact that you've enjoyed it. Alright, we have... Okay, that's more like it. It's a heavier cargo. That one's heading all the way. These are heading all the way north, so I don't think I want to do any of those. This is fragile and an urgent. What could possibly go wrong here? So we have these are insulated. Refrigerated will be a lighter cargo, but similar length, um, similar uh, weight overall. Dry van doubles tempting. Do they have a insulated double? Okay, let's, let's see what a dry van. Um, Let's try the triple axle first. See what, what it says there. What's the cargo there? 43,000 pounds. Okay. That's a decent cargo. As the heavier the cargo, the more you tend to get paid. And we'll try the dry run double. 44,000. I'm going to go with that one, I think. Um, let's, let's basically haul nearly 45,000 pounds. So 4, 4, 7, 34 pounds. Urgent delivery, um, $103 per mile. That's um, that's that's worth having. Okay. So my fuel is nearly full. Um, I don't know how long the trip will take me. I think it was, it was 350 miles, so eight hours, maybe seven, eight hours. Control your speed, you're in the yard. Anyone could just walk out in front of you. Okay, that's not true. Taylor Swift wouldn't walk out in front of me. Oh, it's right around the corner. Okay. I see where it is. All right, that actual whole red and black look thing going on with the mahoosive big exhaust at the back. That's grown on me. Not like a wart, but that's actually grown on me. And I can't believe I'm going to try and line it up from this angle. <clears throat> um, if I can pull this off... Yeah, I'm not going to continue saying that. Right, I don't know if that's lined up. I've dropped the chassis as much as I can. It's 22 and a half, so yeah, I'm a little bit too much towards me. Let's do this. Like so. Uh, I mean, is it lined up? It might be. So we'll find out in a second. I think it's a bit too close towards me, but yeah, it is. Okay. So let's pull it forward and left. Yep, I, I just collided with it. Let's try that. Backing that up. I'm going to steer a little bit left a little bit more. Okay. That might be closer. Gently does it. Uh, nope. Okay. I'm going to zoom in and see where I'm actually wrong. Oh, I wasn't Oh, I was way, way off it. Okay. It's no fun back and forwards for a whole video. Okay. Closer. There we go. Okay, so let's take that back. Yeah, there we go. Great. So that's got the, the whole thing connected. Let's adjust my ride height back to where it should be. I'll do a quick tug test. Um... Yep, we, we didn't move. Oh wait, my parking brake was on. Okay. I think we're still running, so... Trailer brake, pulling forward. Yeah, I can see the nose lift and then let go of the engine brake. There we go. Uh, trailer brake, not engine brake. Right. Well, we didn't exactly do what I wanted to do there from the remote view, but hey, who cares? We've got the cargo now. And... Uh, 
Let's go ahead and leave. This is probably fast enough. So I didn't get any horns at attached because I quite like this um, the horn that it comes with, with no air horns actually showing. You've got this horn as well. Didn't, didn't hear that. That's that one. That's the air, the air horn command, and then this one. This is the straightforward horn. Uh, that's actually... Uh, I like that. Those rear um, exhausts work way better than I thought they would. To collide with this... Um, is it a crane, I guess you would call it? It's a crane. Right, let's jump back in the cabin and um, see how long we've got. So... 3.57 and 7.5 and hours. And we've got 9 hours 15 for the end of my shift. No. 9 hours 15 t to deliver and 12 hours the end of my shift. So I'm going to be fine. Famous last words. I don't think the weather's set to, to favor rain. So um, we'll see if we can actually, uh, you know, deliver this cleanly and, and in good time and not getting any speeding tickets and getting involved in any, uh, I'm speeding, already I'm speeding. Yeah, I mean, what's going to possibly go wrong? So we have a 425 horsepower um, ISL 9 under the hood, I believe. Or is it just an ISL? Hmm. And a, a 10 speed uh, manual, which I'm using in automated mode because I'm being lazy. 1250 foot pounds of torque. That's not a bad set of numbers for a Mac car. 2004 vintage. Let's check what that actually is. Doesn't say. Um, I really want to make sure I've got the right engine here, so I'm going to be a bit obsessive and go into here and just check. So, ISL. It's a straightforward ISL. It's not an ISL 9. I'm glad I checked because I had recorded that incorrectly in my in my spreadsheet. I just can't have a wrong spreadsheet. That would be terrible. How many times do I have to tell you to slow down? Oh, obviously one more time, Doug. I'm sorry. Okay, 16. I'm still speeding, but 15. Is, that's that, that's better. stopping for me anyway, I'm not surprised. I wasn't paying attention then. I missed that Volvo with the trailer, thank goodness. I forget how long this 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 thing is. trying to send a message to my good lady because the small child opened the door and let all the noise in and I don't really want the whole world hearing the delights of a four-year-old screaming but I also don't want the door closed. myself calls oh, after all that I ended up getting a light okay right now we can go ahead and drive properly I think at least that's the plan okay well if you've just joined um, thanks can't get up for <laughs> 
I, I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm, I could do. I absolutely could. Um, but I also know if I get up, I gotta stop the trial. Uh, it's just like complicated. So I'd wait till I get up to get a, a rest break. And uh, basically, when my good lady walked out of the room, she said, "Hey, if you want me to close this, can you do so?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and she just, she didn't hear me. So lame excuse. This engine produces peak torque at 1300 revs, and the ISL 9 is 1400 revs. That's relevant because it means um, I've got a little bit more oomph lower down in the rev range. But that all said, it does produce its peak power until pretty high up, so we're going to need to use the revs to chase that performance. And Max, say, eh, don't exceed 400 horsepower in the R600 chassis. Under the hood. I don't see that documented officially anywhere, but it's like one of those no known truths in seemingly every mag forum that I've ever visited. So at 425, we've exceeded that. So I really don't want to run this thing at full power for 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 long. If I'm going to try and role play, not to destroy the engine. That's it. It's a loud engine brake. And my gearing is set such that when we're cruising we're going to be doing a reasonable number of revs and that's, uh, that's a good thing. between um, 
deciduous trees, I think I've said that correctly. And then uh, as you head further south, you, you, you don't see many pine trees. So I, I enjoy seeing how the landscape changes when driving around in ATS, and that's probably the reason why I got myself into the game when I first bought it. All that, and four years ago we were all locked down at the height of COVID. We couldn't really go anywhere. Well, we weren't supposed to. And uh, staying at home was, was gradually, gradually making a lot of us go maybe a little insane. I don't know whether insanity is, is the right word for it. Stir crazy, perhaps? I, I was certainly in that crowd. An ATS helped, uh, helped me come out of, of that funk. Right, here's some more of these, um, you know, how tight is this bend, really? With this left, right, left, they get progressively tighter as, as you keep on going. So the left is fairly benign, he says, going off the road. The right is a little tighter. I'm going to use the engine brake into this left hand. Because look at this. It's going to catch you out. And each one of those trees becomes an unwilling target. We're now in the Batman village. But I'm... Yeah, I know. I won't give up my day job. I have a feeling the speed drops to 40 through here. And I'm just going to appreciate that this... Estuary, Iron Bridge, whatever you want to call it. But this this whole uh, look here, I think this is um, this is really cool. I'm trying not to run into anyone, but yeah, that that is that is pretty pretty epic. Hey, there's there's a business down there. Use the engine brake. Keep my speed at 40. There we go. Look at that. It's like I've driven this before, right? Check fuel. Fuel is plenty. Fuel is good. I do not think I will be going 17, 87 miles, and also the speed limit has gone up to 70, but it's only very, very briefly. It drops to 55 or 60 just up here. And he says confidently, and it hasn't yet. Hey, someone turn over the next page of my calendar for the time we get up to 70. body roll here and probably about as fast as I want to go around these these corners let's ease off a little there we go and bump back up to 55 yeah there we go it's got, got down to 60 this truck will eventually get up to 70 but I, um, I would need to shave before that happens I think So that's 50 at about 1350 revs, so I might have been wrong with my, um, oh, I wasn't wrong with my estimate, I just didn't allocate for the fact I'm using small wheels now. Yeah, look at that. Roughly, uh, 1470 RPM at 55. Mm, and that's probably about right. Maybe close to 1500, but hey, not going to split hair. happy enough with that. It, it's a pretty heavy cargo. And the fact that we've got 45,000 um, pounds on top of the trailer behind me, it, I think is, is good enough. I'll be able to go maybe 75, maybe 80 with this transmission eventually, but I would need a long road or a steep hill and maybe even both. But would you really need to be doing more than 75, 80 in a truck? Uh, you need to be slower than this though right now, I think. Okay, let's concentrate on my steering. I set my cruise at 40. We'll let the we'll let the truck slow. Gosh, it's back on the engine brake. I was gonna say we'll let the truck slow itself down, but we're, we're coming to a hill, so that's not helping. Just downshift if we can. Yeah, I didn't like that. This hill is going to help me because it'll bring my speed right down to 30 and I may even want to go a little slower than, than this. But right now I'm uh, trying to stay on my side of the road. Okay, 
Is it going to hold 30? I want to know it's not. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Well, um, now I'm holding up this um, Cascadia, I think, behind me. I think it's a Cascadia. Sorry, Gov. Right, I'm going to get back up to 55 if I can. I don't like holding up other traffic unnecessarily. But these hills are going to make it difficult to uh, main maintain my speed, I think. Because as soon as you get up to, up to speed, you come to a, a corner. And you got to slow down again. Oh, change to 45, but we're doing nowhere near 45. Um, downhill stretch, I'm going to lift off the power, I've set my cruise at 30, let, uh, let momentum get me back up to speed, there we go, and I'm going to turn the engine brake on at 40, so we don't exceed 46, okay, I'll let the speed back off now, I'm going to drop the cruise lower, because I can save fuel, a massive amount of fuel doing this, just coast up those, those hills, there we go. What's, what's this? You'll fall off the road if you exceed 35. Okay. Um, I'm going to take that seriously. Well, semi-seriously. I'm going to get back on the panel because we're going, we're going up a hill. And I'm caught under my power band. Let's shift down. See if we can hold this speed, and we can't, so... I can't shift down again, I've not got the revs to do that. We'll, we'll hold it here, see if it, see if it does it in eighth. It, it is. Okay. Trying to manage my energy, trying to manage my gears, not go too fast, not go too slow. Not break the speed limit, but not hold everyone up. But that's just how, where I think. ATS and ETS as well. If you're in the right state of mind, you're in the right mood, it where it exhales. It's a really satisfying um, feeling if you're completely nerdy and obsessed with mileage to complete a trip like this. And let's say you get seven miles per gallon, and you just drive it however you feel, just stick at the speed limit, you get like four and a half. Or you use um, a smaller engine and maintain the same pace, give or take, a few miles an hour average speed, with maybe an X12 as opposed to an X15. The simulation is in-depth enough to let you do that without punishing you too much, or conversely rewarding you too much either. Cantwell. That's a description for a, a fine wine pourer. It could be can't well. And does the speed change? I don't know if it does. It does. Okay. Got the engine brake. Check fuel. Yeah, plenty of fuel. Waking up all these residents. What time is it? <laughs> Quarter past three in the afternoon. Coast. Bump it back up to four. Freightliner's back behind me again. I think he's pushing me along. He wants me to speed up. The limit hasn't changed yet, Sunshine. Sorry. Bells. Or is it Heather, I wonder? I think it might be Heather. The plant, not the girl. Yep, huge chunk of 
pop in there in the distance as it just materialized these trees. Um, I'm optimistic the X12 um, will fix or could fix some of the performance issues that we see with the game. But I will say this, as long as my frame rate is fairly consistent, I don't need the game to run at 300 frames a second, or even for that matter, 120 or 144. I think it's very pleasant at 60. Going from 60 to 45 to 60 can feel really uncomfortable, but in terms of enjoying the game, it, it's fabulously comfortable at sort of 60 frames per second. Yep, I was speeding by two miles an hour. Okay. Quick time check. So three hours thirteen left and four hours and seven. So I've lost a bit of time. An hour ten spare. And I've lost a few minutes, but I'm I'm keeping time pretty good. That, that goes to show that the average speed calculation is is either extremely lucky or um, is is pretty pretty spot on. concerning me a little bit. I could absolutely force it to rain. Though, I could just get it over with. Hey, if you're threatening rain, I'm going to make it rain. I don't know that I want to, though. I may have left um, lifting off a little too late, but we'll we'll see how well we cope with these, these corners. The first left looks a little tighter, and I guess a little less tight. Behaving as though we're going on a slight descent. I'm gonna pump the power back up. We're gonna see if we can just muscle through it at 55. We'll get up to 55 and then muscle through it, so so we may not um we may not manage it. Actually, it's not true. It's, it, sometimes having a little heads up would, would be beneficial, but at the end of the day, it's still my responsibility to get to the speed limit or lower at the posted speed limit.
This is going to straighten up a little bit over here. So I'm only supposing that that speed limit was in place because the road got a little twisty. But again, still nothing showing on the map, but nothing of interest coming up. To one Dalton Highway, generic white male, you mentioned earlier on. Um, I'm not that. F I've heard of the Dalton Highway, but I'm not familiar with the mod in the game. So um, maybe it's it's uh, just not a, not crossed my um, my radar. Maybe seems a little. Um, where have I seen it before? I must have maybe watched some. Oh, speed. Come on, David, pay attention to, to the roads. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look, look that up. Um, obviously not when I'm driving, because that would be dangerous. Get off the side of the road, David. You, you do not live on the white line. Standalone map. Oh, okay. That's probably why I've shied away from the standalone maps because um, early on in my ATS modding experience, I, I trashed um, a profile because I basically removed a mod and couldn't load my profile back. And I did something similar with our standalone map. I think I got a bit unlucky, but I've, I've shied away from them. But I'll have to check, check it out. Um, some of the one-to-one -one, um, farms and stuff look very interesting. And one-to-one, -one, um, yeah, that, that sounds that sounds cool. I, I, I'm a little hesitant sometimes, but I don't think the game will let you get away with you know full-on traffic volume. I'm thinking of a commute th this week, where normally it's a 20-minute drive. It was an hour and a half. But usually, it, it, if if you plan to arrive an hour before you get to work, it's hard to be late. But yeah, I managed it. Dang. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think I've tried ATS with insane traffic levels, and your CPU just gets clogged up with all the work, and the, the game stutters like uh, me when I was 15, around a girl, um, or me any age around most pretty girls. Um, it it's not not a pleasant experience. And before 1.49, you throw in some rain, and the game was really laggy. Even on what I would have thought would be a fairly capable machine, but the X11, yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. The traffic, yeah. I think. Um, the, the traffic and the rain. The rain has gone better. It just loads up the one the one thread. And maybe DX12 will separate more of the sort of tasks that the game engine's got to do onto different threads, different cores, different CPUs, maybe. But a little part of me is very wary of the promise brought on by DX12. Um, a lot of games that migrated from sort of 11 to 12 kind of got worse on 12, at least at the start. So a lot of people in the forums are saying DX12 is, or the way that they are evangelizing DX12 is going to be the, you know, the, the holy grail, it's going to be the, the be all and end all, and we're going to live happily ever after. It may break a lot of mods. Um, oh, this is a tight corner coming up. And um, it may not be as smooth as we hope. It might be more consistent, but we don't know. Now that said, SCS have implemented some pretty big changes to the game. I'm thinking of the convoy mode here. And when they enabled mods, for the most part, that was very smooth, very, very seamless. There are going to be some mods that didn't quite play by the rules and wouldn't work either way. 
but for a, a mod designer, and I have the simplest mods around, being able to make it optional was a, a one-line change, and that was fabulous. I didn't have to learn um, anything other than one line to put in a mod. That makes a big difference. Use my, use my full beam. I'm a little thirsty now. Something I feel I should have explained earlier on. Um, turns out my headset mic and all the software I use um, has got some pretty aggressive noise cancelling, um, which works great for the stream side of things. But I wear open back headphones. Um, not really for any special sound quality reasons, but um, I like, yeah wife comes in the room and wants to talk to me, I might be able to hear her without taking my headphones off. But the downside of that is, a lot of noise just, just goes straight through. I have my game kind of quiet, and if I'm hearing a lot of noise in the other room, I basically struggle to concentrate on anything. <coughs> excuse me. So that's my excuse. And the way that the doors are arranged at, at the, the house that they live, we have this little sound tunnel that shunts noise from the living room into um, the bedroom. Now I strongly speculate this is by design so that kids don't get away with mischief when their parents are in their room. Now is this my destination? No. It's dead ahead. Okay. I should know this by now. to the left, turn in, and... Dum, dum, dum. There we go, okay. Ah, uh, I am not going to do the whole turnaround thing, that's not going to be fun, let's just do it. I'm in a hurry, let's see what we've got right. So we covered 362 miles, which is um, about 100 miles more than last time, and 50.3 gallons, that's eerily kind of, kind of similar. Let's, uh, wait, let's just check that, is that right? 7.2 to the gallon? Dang. Okay, well I guess it's, this engine's pretty efficient. Um, yes, you're right, yeah, Vul Vulcan, I remember when, when Vulcan was announced and that was like, that's the next big thing, that's got lots of potential I I improvements. So I'm, I'm y you're right, I was wasn't aware the Vulcan was coming as well. Um, it seems too good to be true. I'm excited to get Vulcan. Yeah, I with noise cancelling headphones. Um, I've got some clothes back and I enjoy them, but I don't hear much around me. And um, got the open mic ones because. I would never normally spend that much money on on um, headphones, but there were it was a gift. So I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try them. I really enjoy the open backed. So yeah, that that might be an option as well. Um, but then I'm gonna end up with three headphones, and that feels excessive because I don't wanna. I don't really feel like I want to sell the used headphones. You'd have to replace bits. This is for hygiene reasons. So I don't know. Right, I think I want to take a night stop in the game, but I also think I want to travel to another city. Um, let's go to the south. I don't, um, I don't have an answer for for the sound thing. Sadly, my my hearing is, uh, it's sliding, it, it, it's deteriorating, and, and oh, this was like what. What? My game crashed. That's outrageous. Huh. That's also unusual. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to leave this screen on for just a second. Uh, if you've used an SDK, um, so in this case I've got the, the Zmod sound plugin. 
I've also got the Stream Deck, but that's not enabled, or my Stream Deck's not plugged in. This is a very interesting disclaimer. Please note that functionality is provided on an as-is basis with no guarantee as to the performance and function. Okay, great. This game copy has not been licensed for use in professional driving simulator environment, for driver training, or public use in cyber cafes. Which means some versions are. Which means you can get this game and license it for professional driving simulator or for driver training. And that, dear audience, is absolutely cool. We saw this when they launched the 57X. They had a SCS had an article, um, I think there was an image of a Western Star dealership with a Western Star um, mock-up and ATS running. That is awesome. I need to go and visit some dealers and see if I can play around with their stuff, but it's probably not going to happen. They might see through it. <laughs> I mean, there's a British guy walking into a Texan <laughs> truck dealership. <laughs> they might not think I'm legit. Certainly wouldn't be the first time that that happened. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and customize the rig, I think. Um, I promised this earlier on, but I want to change the paint job to be um, bright yellow. Although, although the white's kind of nice. And hey, there's orange too. And we could always go back to this orange. Or cream. No. No, no. We promised. We promised bright bright yellow even. Look at that. Isn't that a sore eye for a sight? <laughs> sight for sore eyes. I want to tweak this. I'm going to remove the... No, I'm not. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to go with... Um, I'll go with this one. Yeah. And bracket. I'm happy with that. Inlet. I don't think I need a chrome one. I'll go with that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Why it crashed? Well, obviously it had too much going on, but somewhere to sleep. Lots of places to sleep. We'll go around this way. Ready to roll. And can I get out here? Uh, I think I can get out around the corner. Just to go my own way. Oh, let's just go left. But whatever I do, I'm not going to indicate until here. Why indicate when people can just guess and use ESP? So, in a way, I'm not that surprised that this engine was as efficient was because it's a modern engine it's it's not having to work as hard as the the less powerful ones and it's small it's it's nine liter 3.9 liter so i ought not to be surprised that i got uh, yeah, a great mileage number um yeah that's i shouldn't be so surprised but i i, I still was All right oh uh, whoa i guess i go near these plant pots this is the block of a pub, so I'm going to stop here. Or is it a motel? Uh, neither way, there's a somebody out there. He, he is stalking someone. Oh, is it peeping Tom? I am. Um, yeah, I'm going to lock the doors, and we'll take a break. Right. I think what I want to do is change the engine. We'll do another another short run for tonight. What time is it for me? It's 9 p.m. Okay. I'm gonna hoof it back here at as fast as this little ISL can take me. Bump the curb. Yep, there we go. We're gonna bust the speed limit. We're thrashing a cold engine. That's not good for any engine, but that's probably really not good for something like this. Zip up to the Arctic Circle for a bit. Yeah, the tire square. We're gonna 
nurse it into here, jam on the brakes, and bring it to a halt. Right, I know exactly what I want to do this, this time. We're going to go with a uh, much older engine, and we're going to use a standard Mac transmission. So let's go here. We want to use the five speed, which I did not see for looking, and I know why, because it's actually included here. So wakey wakey, that's the five speed. And we want to use the 237 Thermodyne. Not Thermodyne. Um, where's it gone? This one. Because it's not really a Mac video unless you've driven with a five speed, I don't think. Uh, so let's go back here. It's an E6. I know these numbers 237 and 906, I believe. Yep, 906. I can say I know them. I still have to check. Let's do that. So it's a standard five speed. Pretty short in the gearing. That's uh, 1774 RPM estimated at 55 miles an hour. So I'm going to confirm that order. Check what's damaged. It's completely fine, more or less. And I'm not going to change the winter tires, which would be sensible. I want to go here. I want to go to Coldfoot. Yeah, this is going to go to Coldfoot. Welcome to the snow. So start the engine minus four Fahrenheit. I don't know that there's any cargo I can take from Coldfoot. There, there, there isn't. In fact, there's nothing out here. Um, I will at least try. Maybe I can take something from Coldfoot. Actually, no, nope, nothing. So I got nowhere to really take a cargo from, unfortunately. This is going to be a bad idea then. I mean, it, it looks pretty, but if you've seen the snow, you've seen the snow. <sighs> okay, change plan. It's just such a long way. And I don't really want to do such a long, a long trip. Let's go to talk. There's going to be something I can take here, and this stretch of the road is is getting a little little different. Right, what have we got from talk? Please let there be something here. Yes, we've got, oh, we've got stuff here. Oh, hello, that's a long trip. Not doing that one. That's another long trip. So, again, with the long trips. Um, I... Can you sense my frustration? I, I don't want to do a 900 mile trip or try and do a 900 mile trip on the stream because it's just a little too far. But maybe I'll start something. Okay, let's get my headlights on. It's not as cold down here in Tok. I'm going to do this manually. It's a five speed, so it, it's much easier to <laughs> short shift and then immediately regret it. It's much easier to. Um, to shift myself. That's a nice view on the left. Well, you've only got five, five gears. If you're using an 18 speed, you've never used manual as a sequential in the game. is a real challenge. Especially if you slow down and you forget you've got to cycle through every single gear. You end up tapping an awful lot. Okay, could have just grabbed an Alice and automatic, I suppose. Uh, we have just one to Sorocco, New Mexico, 2,000 miles, and I no, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do that on the stream, unless the stream finishes tomorrow lunch. Okay, let's ruin that idea then. There's another business up over here we can check out. So. We're going to be jerks. We're going to just use the, the road to it back onto. First, and off we go. We're going the wrong bloody way. Seriously, David. Okay, well, 
so far this this planned road short road trip is becoming an epic disaster it's so terrible that we gotta call Thunderbirds and there's a car coming from the right as well yes there is or something coming from the right should have got the V8 oh well So at least, oh, now the, uh, the limit's gone to 55. We're going to move up to 55 and then turn left. Here's the entrance. Give me a bit of a bump. There we go. Inappropriate use of speed. Big bump there. Speaking of, or talking about sound stuff, I've been toying with the idea of getting a, a discrete graphics card, a uh, graphics card, oh my gosh, a discrete sound card to install in, in my machine as opposed to using motherboard sound. So I get that motherboard sound's not very good compared to um, discrete um, sound card. I don't know if it's the quality if I'm going to be able to tell. But I keep seeing that if you spend a bit of money on headphones and they have a good reputation for sound, you do notice it with a dedicated sound card. Or a USB digital audio converter, maybe something like that. But that's a long drive. I don't want to do that on this. Okay. Hmm. I'm at a bit of a loss because um, I really wanted to see some of the scenery, but I've not got that left long long left tonight so I think reluctantly I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring this stream to a close I think let's let's quit whilst I'm kind of ahead because that doesn't always happen being ahead that is so um, I guess if you've stuck it out this long thanks ever so much for hanging out with me tonight it's been a bit of a convoluted one but hey I just felt the need to stream um, if it's been a long day, it's a great way to just uh, just relax and enjoy it. Well, hopefully you have too. Yep. Okay. How something your mother bought is there's a there's an icon in the way. So how old? How old? Okay. Um, it's a Z490, I think, the tenth gen Intel. So it's not it's not ancient. It's not certainly not a spring chicken. Okay, that's good to know. Because um, you could spend a fortune on parts for a computer that you really don't benefit from. Unlike RGB. Well, actually, no, that makes it faster, right? <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Yeah, I'm going to call that, call it, call it for the night. It was a lot of fun for me just to hang out and just blather on at random various topics. So I hope that you enjoyed me blathering at random too. And um, subscribe for more craziness. And, uh, I'll see you the next time I have a long day. Thanks ever so much for watching, everyone. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.